Hey everybody, uh, Manitoba Hal here, as you know. Um, today is our Patreon video day, and I am in the middle of an epic Canadian road trip. I left Nova Scotia on Thursday, it is now Monday, and I am in Ignis, Ontario. Um, I am traveling through to Calgary, where I hop a plane to Australia and eventually New Zealand. It's a very exciting trip. I'm really happy to be there. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I got this video for you guys. So I stopped at this lovely view, uh, panoramic viewpoint. And uh, here's some lovely shots of uh, my van and Ignis. Okay, now, let's talk about today's video. Uh, this video is a response to a question from Dave Worthington, one of our Patreon subscribers. Thank you, Dave, for your message. Dave wanted some tips on how to be ready to solo when you're called upon, you know, when you're jamming with a musician on stage or, or even just in your room uh, or in your, uh, your practice hall. And he says, take it, Dave. He wanted to know what to do, uh, some tips to be ready. So here is my top five tips to be ready to solo. That didn't really show up. Top five tips. There you go. You can tell I'm sitting very close to my camera in this video. Anyway, tip number one. The first thing you want to do is have confidence. Now, that's a really easy thing to say, and I know you're probably going, oh yeah, Hal, sure, you've been playing for years, you can have confidence. But here's the thing, always make sure you know what you know and what you don't know, and be prepared to say no when you're called upon. Have the confidence to know what you're able to deliver. And if, he, if, you're so, if you can't think of something or you're feeling lost as you're playing the song or you're struggling to keep up with the changes, when they call you for a solo, don't step out on that ledge. I mean, it's not going to affect anybody's opinion of you if you're not able to do that. Many times on stage, I have shaken off a solo. It is very common to do. So don't panic about that. Now, in order to have confidence to step out on that ledge, you're going to want to know a few key things. So you're going to want to be practiced. You're going to want to kind of know the key ahead of time. If, uh, if you're playing with someone and they say, hey, can you come and join me on stage with this song? Go over it before you're on stage. Make sure you're comfortable with it so that when the time comes, you're ready. You want to be sure. Now, tip number two. Uh, how can you be ready and confident? I mean, I know it dovetails with the last one, but how can you be ready? Well, when you're at home in your practice time, make sure you spend a lot of time playing over your basic scales. Um, basic scales I'm referring to are pentatonic scales. It's a five-tone scale, five-tone, five tips. Coincidence? I think not. It's a five-tone scale. Spend time practicing that five-tone scale over and over again in as many keys as you can, uh, uh, well, as you can afford. In, I mean, really, there's seven, so you shouldn't have any trouble. And here's the real trick about the pentatonic scale. There are five basic positions on the fingerboard of the ukulele uh, of where the scale lives. And if you want to learn all the keys, all you really have to understand is that that scale changes position as you move up. So for example, if you're playing in the first position, a C minor pentatonic scale on your ukulele would start on the third fret of the A string, be the first fret of the A string, third fret of the E string, first fret of the E string, third fret of the C string, open on the C string, and if you're using a low G, third fret on the G string and open on the low G. That is your C minor pentatonic scale. If you wanted to play that in D minor, you play that exact same shape two frets up. So it goes from the fifth fret on the A string to the third fret on the A string, the fifth fret on the E string to the third fret on the E string, the fifth fret on the C string to the second fret on the C string, the fifth fret on the G and the second on the G if you have, of course, a low G. So you can see that by learning that one position, I have at least two keys available to me within a two fret span. And by moving it continually up the neck, 
that's how I can use it. So memorize those five positions. Uh, you can get them. I have uh, charts available. They're in my Blues uh, Method book. They're available free online. It's not hard to get this information. So get them and practice the scales. Uh, the second thing you want to do is if you have a video recorder, like I'm using my cell phone here, my iPhone, record yourself playing the song or a representative song that you think you'll be soloing over. Dave mentioned a, a song that uh, uh, Ken uh, Middleton and I performed in Scotland. Uh, I believe it was called I'm a Pilgrim. Um, anyway, the point is, I had never heard the song before, so we ran through it once before, but had I known the song, I could have played the song into my recorder, recorded the progression that was going to happen, and then practiced with my scales over that progression to come up with a representative solo. So if you can do that, that's another way to make sure that you have confidence. Basically, get all the tools at your disposal ready beforehand. My third tip on how to be ready to take that solo when the time comes is to understand how solos are constructed. Now, this is a big, big subject. It's much bigger than this video can accomplish, but let me give you a couple of basic tips. What you want to look for as you're building a solo is you want to look at harmonic construction, which is a fancy word, which basically means that you want the melodies you play to center themselves in a pleasing way around the changes that are coming. So if your song is in C, F, and G, for example, you want to start with your C minor scale uh, or major scale, depending on the melody. That's a question you have to determine. But you want to start with melody notes that center on either beginning with or ending on the C or the fifth harmony, the G. Uh, really, there's this is a subjective standard. Find what you find is pleasing, but you want to center around the key tonal uh, shapes at that moment. So in C, you want to center around C or the fourth harmony with you know the with the F or the G. When it's on F, you want to go F. G, etc., and so on. So your your notes are always hovering in and around. See this? I'm playing my ukulele in the air. That's what I'm doing. What you want to do is always hover your notes around the changes that are happening. At the beginning, aim for the root note. It's the easiest thing. And uh, so you want to kind of design in your head melodies that lead you back to the change that's coming, either by traveling up the scale to the new change. So if you're playing in C and going to F, you go you know, C, D, E, F, and you land on F when the F change happens, or if you're going backwards from the note above. And that that's one of the things you need to practice over and over again is how to get to and from those changes and make sure you know where they are. The, the, uh, the other thing to do with it is to understand that the solos are not meant to be accurate representations of the melody. They certainly can be, but what they are to, supposed to do is suggest the melody and suggest the, uh, the rhythm of the piece. So when you're putting your little riffs together, your runs of notes that uh, create the melody, the, the solo that you're playing, what you want to look for, there's a fly bugging right in front of Mosquito anyway, what you want to look for is something that rhythmically matches the melody. Now, uh, for example, again, something like, uh, you know, um, well, I don't know, any blues song you can think of, uh, you know, um, so I'm supposed to think of stuff before I start the video. If you're trying to look at something like, you know, Atlanta Moan, nobody knows Atlanta like I do. So you want this, you know, ba 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 that's what you're trying to achieve. Not necessarily with that melody again, but think of that rhythm. Da, 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 da. And the closer you match the rhythm of the melody that you have been hearing through the singing, the more people are going to think that you're playing a very sweet solo. So make sure that you know to follow the changes where they land harmonically and rhythmically as well. And that'll make your solo really uh, captivating. Also, uh, remember, again, practicing the changes ahead of time, you want to end your solo before the singer starts singing, and you want to end on a nice resolution. So, for example, again, if we're using our C, F, and G, when you come along and you're on the final note uh, progression turnaround, uh, in the case of a blues song or any song, and you're coming back around to the start, it starts on C, you want to end your solo on whatever the last change is 
leading right into your C and think about your decay. So, for example, if I were building up and that last note da can be something that is harmonically pleasing to the new change. As long as I hit the note before the singer starts singing or the melody has to start singing and I can hang on to it so that it can ride into that melody starting and then as soon as you hear the melody you want to decay that note off really quickly so get used to the idea of grabbing it and holding it and then choking it back uh, but that's just practice you got to do that over and over again fourth tip about having confidence for that solo is remember you are playing music play 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 it's fun have fun and don't worry if you screw up so many people I think get this idea in their head that oh my god I have to be perfect people are going to judge me if I'm wrong I'm judging myself if I'm wrong and it doesn't have you don't have any fun doing it the audience really only knows that you're having fun that's what they know and that's what they experience and so take yourself out on the edge and fall off the cliff and laugh then get back on that's going to show you to be a professional. It's going to show you to be someone who knows that you're having a good time and they're going to enjoy the experience of it. So take time and do that. Have fun. And my last tip, tip number five to have confidence is always, always, always remember this is not important. I know that sounds crazy. We spend all our time practicing. I make my living playing music. Of course, it's important. It's the most important thing in the world. But here's the reality. This is a moment in time. And again, once the audience knows if you're having fun or not, they're not going to remember every single note you play. And here's a, a trick that flies, driving me crazy. Here's something that I learned years ago, and I uh, maybe it's the wrong thing to think about, but I think it's a good thing to remember is that the only people that know whether what you did is right or wrong are musicians and from a business standpoint musicians are the worst customers because a if they want to come to your show they want to comp if they want your CD they generally want to trade it so you're not making money off them I know that's not a sexy thing to say or a passionate thing oh I do it for the love but in reality they're the only ones that are going to know whether you did something right or wrong the audience is going to know if you're having fun and if they enjoy it and once you're done, they have moved on to the next thing. Now, you want to be, you want to have fun, going back to our last tip, you want to have fun, you want to enjoy yourself, and you want to go out there and not obsess about it. I myself have in the in past obsessed about details like this. I've made my life difficult. I've made experiences I've had. I've colored them by uh, putting too much pressure on myself. And later on, when I saw photos and videos, I thought to myself, oh my God, who is that guy on stage? Because I was so stressed and worried. And the, uh, that the, the guy performing didn't seem to be, and the audience loved it, and people said it was a great show. So what I've learned from all that and what I want to share with you is that this is a moment of time. It's a tiny thing. It is not the be-all and end-all. It is not the final uh, moment of your life. It is not the, the game-changing gig that's going to make you a star. It is a tiny moment. Remember that and have fun with it. And that will give you the most uh, positive response and, and, and let you enjoy the process of exploring and playing music. So good luck, Dave, and everyone else, good luck. We'll be back uh, with more videos next month. I'm going to be in New Zealand when I make them. So hopefully there'll be some uh, fancy settings for you, and uh, we'll have a good time. Um, I want you to remember to practice. I want you to remember to have fun. And uh, thank you for your support, Dave, uh, as one of my Patreon subscribers. If you haven't found out about Patreon already or if you haven't looked into it, uh, follow the link down below here and check out my page for as little as a dollar per video that, that I make a month. I only make two, so we're talking two bucks a month. You get access to these kind of tutorials, to playing tutorials, behind the scenes video, and uh, you help me keep my career, uh, well, help me survive as an artist. I mean, let's be, be honest, that's what it is. This is about income as I go along and allows me to share my knowledge with you. 
my Patreon subscribers, they pay me to make these videos that I'm giving away to you for free. And so what they get in exchange is this behind the scenes stuff and they get to ask questions like Dave did for this video and I will answer it directly. So uh, take a chance, look at it, see if it's for you. And if it isn't, don't worry, these videos are going to keep coming out and uh, we'll have a good time. So thanks for watching and have a great day.